We are live. Welcome to The Book of Boba Fett, uh, Episode 1, Thoughts, and the Episode 2 Thoughts will be later in this video. If you're only interested in that part, I am going to put a time code in the description box. So, as usual, spoilers for the episode and the movies. This episode is called Stranger in a Strange Land. Oh, and just real quick, my bad back has evolved into a worse back, so this will be the only video this week. I am getting treatments, and I am improving, but I don't want to risk it by also doing a movie, which does somewhat strain my back. Usually, my back can handle it. Not taking that chance this time. Brief... Yeah, a couple of things that aren't specific to this episode, but are specific to the show. If you haven't already, make sure you check out Peter Holland's version of the opening theme and Whitney Avalon's Grogu song. So, to the specific notes for the episode. Great opening, extremely atmospheric. I love how gritty this makes Camino look. I knew that the escape from the Sarlacc pit would be at least partially shown. Not sure I expected it to be so goopy and slimy and gross. I love it. And the Jawa's still the armor, even hitting him in the head when he briefly wakes up. So, just like in The Mandalorian, they are jerks. And that is, of course, how... I can't remember his name, but Timothy Oliphant on The Mandalorian ended up with the armor. And... some A tribe of Tuscan find him... Tus Tuscan? Tuscans? I'm going to go with Tuscan. You find him, wake him up with some kind of juice, and then drag him behind them. And they travel single file, just like Ben Kenobi told us in episode 4. Good attention to detail. And some of the same, some of them, I, I guess the kids hit him repeatedly until he's knocked out, and the leader looks on, walks away. I really like how they, like, it's largely non-verbal but the leader you know gradually accepts boba more you know at first he's like yeah the kids are beating him up sure no problem and then later you know and and he's always drinking that that water th yeah it looks i mean i'm gonna go with water it looks like water when when the kid pours it out you know later on he hands it to boba so as to you know he so so that yeah and I like that, you know, Boba tries to free himself, the alien dog wakes up, and, like, he pauses briefly, and then he just continues, <laughs> like, he's staring this thing down, like, yeah, I'm gonna free myself, what are you gonna do about it? Are you gonna bark all day, little doggy? Are you gonna bite? And, you know, turns out he was actually hoping that it would attack so he could... You know, he, you know, he grabs it, knocks it out, and then uses its teeth to free himself from the rope, which is obviously much more effective than just trying to use the, the I get tree thing to, to try to free him from the rope. And, you know, he tries to, to talk to the, the road, ro Rodian, I think they're called, but he shouts to the Tuscans, and, you know, yeah. Tuscans come out, dog wakes up, Bo makes a run for it, but of course he can't outrun the dog. And yeah, so so he fights it, and the tribe leader sees and signals the dog to stop, and then Boba fights like I guess their strongest warrior or something. It's a it's a good kind of you know like the the leader is like, okay. He can, that was not something I expected him to be able to do. Let's see how tough he is. And Boba's waking up by Fennec Shand for some coffee. Very cool when the droids put his armor on him. Did you catch any of that? I don't actually speak Spanish. May you never leave, Mos Espa. Even when a Trandos can pay you a compliment, it sounds like a threat. And things get really tense with the guy sent by the mayor. I don't understand. He wants you to pay him. Shall I kill him? That's your solution to everything. Lord Fett offers the gift of you leaving unmolested. 
That poor guy, someone else is going to have to tell him that this is Sparta. I would expect another delegation in the near future. It's really no wonder this guy got this gig. He is remarkably good at choosing his words carefully while talking about ridiculously sensitive masses, mess, meh, blah, matters. Bringing offensive messages. You gotta have serious guts to walk in and tell the crime lord, no, 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 we're not going to pay you, you pay us. You're not gonna pay... Fair enough. This is not the last you've heard of this. Okay. No, we're not here for drinks. We have business with uh, Gar Garza Thwip, I think her name is. So, this little piggy went to the cantina, and this little piggy didn't stay home? Job ruled with fear. I intend to rule with respect. My question is, is it too much for ask for both? So, the fight when Boba and Fennec are surrounded by shield and attacked with taser sticks... I've seen several people who hate this fight, and I can kind of understand why. I mean, I guess it's okay. I legitimately have no clue why Boba fired that rocket and was surprised when, like, he himself got hit by the explosion. You know, the, the fight seems very contrived in order to give the piggies a way to prove their loyalty. And I, I do appreciate that. I like that you know, he doesn't kill these, you know, because all he really needs from them is loyalty. So, yeah. I, yeah, it just... I don't know. I, I would have preferred that they handled it differently. I, I guess maybe... Let's see. What if just... Yeah, instead of instead of using like there's a point in the fight where Fennec like tries to jump and attack and she can't quite make it over. I th I thought that worked. I would have preferred more like that. You know, maybe he yeah, he he tries to fight hand to hand or something. But yeah. Fennec alive. <laughs> you actually have to tell her that Every time she, like, you know, she's like, I'm gonna go walk the dog. Fennec? Alive. Not bad parkour. And Boba goes back into the tank. Okay, I'm starting to see what people mean about how it spends too long on Boba before the events of The Mandalorian. I quite appreciate that as Boba is waking up and readjusting his eyes to the bright light of the desert, we get a little fade and color adjustment. The alien dog really does move in a way that feels natural. Great detail. Like, everything. Like, the the face of the head. And the, the legs. And just everything. Yeah. And, yeah. So, they're digging up water canisters. Oh, that you understand, huh? I mean, to be fair... Silence doesn't mean he doesn't understand, it just, it might just mean he doesn't care, or believe you. Goro Lizard unburies himself, and he is pissed. I really love the, de the, the, the design of this thing. Like, how, you know, when it's standing on its hind legs, it has four arms, so it can, like, keep attacking. But then if it has to, like, move fast, it can get down on, f not all fours, but four of the six and like run and still have two hand it's really really cool design and that was apparently like rodriguez's own idea at least some of it i mean i think that is one of the strongest suits of robert rodriguez he has interesting ideas for for yeah and boba wraps the chain around his neck jumps on his back badass and the Tuscan child brings the head back to camp, basically kind of taking credit, but the leader is like, the kid didn't do that. That's not, you know, so he, and he shares his drink with Boba. So yeah, this episode was directed by Robert Rodriguez. I've seen others say that this episode feels as small as Rodriguez's early work, like El Mariachi. I kind of have to agree. And let's see the... And 
yeah, here we go. Right, so I am just very quickly going to note, there we go, the time code. So, the Book of Boba Fett, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called Nev bleh, The Tribes of Tatooine. There we go, and in case you skipped ahead, once again, spoilers for the episode and the movies. Right. The recap reminds me, I meant to say I like that Fennec captures two, but she only needs one. You know, like, the other guy isn't gonna, like, tattletale. You know, he's not gonna tell, you know, she could have taken two of us, but she could... So, yeah, she kills the other one, which also really tells the one still alive not to mess with her. No rancor, I guess. Bib Fortuna didn't bother to replace it after Luke killed the last one? And apparently the mayor set an assassin, but I guess by the end of the episode, maybe it was actually the the twins. Yeah. Very tense when Bobo walks into where the mayor is. Really good stuff. Like, I really loved when, like, straight up, one of the mayor's men killed the assassin, and, like, everyone's pulling guns and knives, what have you, starting some crap, and it's like, no, 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 we just wanted to kill him, don't, you know, yeah, and at the sanctuary, Boba's told about the twins returning, so we already knew that huts eat living alien creatures, small ones, now we see them using, like, I guess it's like a, a it's, it's like a mouse or a rodent, because it's not a bat. Bats aren't rodents. And it's like wiping the sweat off it. You know, and, and this animal is clearly terrified. You know, just to, just to show dominance. Just to show that they don't care about other life forms. And Boba doesn't use a litter, but the twins do. Good character detail. And apparently, I, I have to admit, I didn't notice this myself. But, like, I saw a breakdown where someone pointed out... Over the course of the scene, you can see that the the slaves carrying the litter get increasingly exhausted over the course of the scene. That's a really good detail. Those guys on the train are incredibly good shots. Like, the distance is one thing, but they're also moving extremely fast on that train. And the Tuscan are like, you cannot stop the rain. I mean train. Love Boba entering the bar. The first thing you see is just a silhouette. And Boba beats up the aliens in the bar, hitting one of them in the crotch. Good thing he's not a Balchinian. So, the aliens in the bar ride their speeders in a pack, start trouble in bars, hassling regular people, and have markings on the back of their vests. So they are the Star Wars equivalent to a bike gang. I like that. And we see Boba teaching the Tuscans, riding speeder bikes, jumping between them, working their way to being able to stop the train, and, you know, very, yeah, very YouTube breakdowns have pointed out, you know, a train robbery is, you know, you, you gotta have that in your, in your Western, that's a, not all Westerns have it, but it is a, a classic motif. I like the scene of them actually stopping the train. I appreciate it is a multi-part plan. It's not easy. It's especially satisfying when several of them are on top of the train, taking out some of the aliens on the train, and even at that point, there's still more to go. And the the I gotta say, I've I've seen some people say that you know Boba has plot armor. Yeah, when he's like several speeders get shot by the the uh pike syndicate people on the train and like most of the speeders just explode immediately the one boba's on like i think he has maybe 30 seconds before it explodes that was kind of like i wish they just had them not hit it or or only hit it right before to, yeah and the robot jumps out of the train rather than stop it. And we see that the robot is actually 
perfectly capable of moving fast, so that was the plan, their backup plan, you know, in case someone tries to stop the train, it's going to make it go insanely fast, and then just jump out, you know. What does spice look like? Like that. Whoops. Any death to the Raiders will be returned tenfold. That's the Chicago way. And yeah, again, we see how Boba is gradually gaining more and more respect from the Tuscan. And the Tuscan leader, you know, they're they're in the the tent. It's at night, and the Tuscan leader gives Boba a gift. Here's a lizard, Boba. It went up his nose, and that was the plan. And yeah, I guess it's like a, a spirit quest. I want to say it's called. And I am not going to be able to do justice to watch the various breakdown. I, I want to say it was, I think new rock stars were the ones who got the most out of the imagery of the spirit quest. I think, was it maybe heavy spoilers who also talked about it? But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do them justice. So yeah. And the lizard comes back out his nose and goes back into the, the little container. Which also does tell us, you know, the Tuscans must treat that thing well. Because it doesn't look at all scared. It understands what it's supposed to, you know, this is not, they treat it much better than the huts treat that little rodent. And, I mean, for the lizard itself, if they feed it and, like, it gets, I, I don't know, do lizards, like, the sun I, f I forget but you know what whether it wants a place in the sun or the shade they try to give it that you know yeah why, why wouldn't it it's it's a sweet gig it doesn't have to go out and look for food it doesn't have to make an effort to have a good place in the sun or the shade and we see the Tuscans put clothes on Boba similar to how the droids did in episode one in the present day stuff and we see how Boba got the stick I've seen some people who really hated that I didn't have a problem with it like I mean it's not just like oh you know we see how he got no there's clearly meaning behind it you know he's he's becoming more and more one of them I I didn't think that it was a waste of time for the for the episode but to be thrown and this episode was directed by Steph Green I gotta say I love I like this episode a lot more than the first one I, I I haven't looked up if she directed others I know that Robert Rodriguez directed others I hope I like those more than I like that one. Um, so I haven't really been doing, like, giving ratings for these episodes. I guess I could. I would say the first one, all in all, was probably a 7 out of 10. And this one was an 8 out of 10. At times getting very close to a 9. But at the end of the day, ultimately in the present day, not that much was really accomplished. Uh, by the way, I didn't I didn't know Black Chrysanthemum before this show, but you know some people were really psyched that he showed up. That's cool. I'm really glad, and he does look like I've seen. He apparently was in like a comic, and you know, and yeah, they nailed the look for for yeah. And as we learn in the Book of Ice Cream, Chapter One, an oral notes Star Wars story. Boba Fett becomes the leader of a cream syndicate. If you haven't watched that video already, you gotta. In, in general, Oral Knots, their Star Wars stuff, is hilarious. And a lot of their other stuff is as well. And yeah, that those were my notes. So yeah, I, you know, so far I think it's perfectly fine. I Maybe I'll dislike it more as... The episodes go because some people apparently really did. Hate. I mean, I've heard that the last, like, third is a lot better, but for reasons that they didn't kind of want it to be. But yeah, I've, I've heard some people really hate at least chunks of this show. So yeah. But that is it for this video, and I will catch you next week.